This is Miss Stacy from the Youth Services Department of the Fayetteville Public Library, and this is preschool story time for ages three to five. Before we begin, I'm gonna have a couple announcements as usual. Our Super Saturday program this week is a special story time with Danielle Sargent Musselman, a former sports anchor and wife of Razorback basketball coach Eric Musselman. And she'll be here to do a special story time at 10 a.m. in the Walker Community Room. This is a registered event, so go online to our event calendar to register for that. Also a reminder that we have our 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program going, and that's an easy thing to sign up for at the preschool desk, and you will be able to get fun prizes for reading books you're probably already reading. It's super simple. You don't even have to keep track of like titles or authors. You just keep track of the number of books you've read, and it's a really fun thing. So let's sing our hello song. We wave and sing hello, we wave and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. We clap and sing hello, we clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. We wink and sing hello, we wink and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wink and sing hello. Very good, friends. Today's story time is all about something uh, almost everybody wears all the time, and that is underwear. And if you wanted to sign underwear in American Sign Language, you would start out with finger guns like this. And you put them down where your underwear is and bring them out to your hips and pinch. Underwear. Very good, friends. Let's read our first story. We'll grab it from back here. All right, this is a fun one that I hope you like. It's not scary at all, I think, but you might think so. But sometimes I like to read scary stories, don't you? It's called Creepy Pair of Underwear by Aaron Reynolds, and the pictures are by Peter Brown. Ooh, there's one creepy pair of underwear. Creepy pair of underwear. Jasper Rabbit needed new underwear. On Thursday, Mom took him to the underwear store and grabbed the last three packages of plain white. But as they headed for the checkout, Jasper spotted them. Creepy underwear. So creepy, so comfy. They were glorious. Mom, Mom, can we get these? Jasper pleaded. I think they're a little too creepy, said Mom. They're not creepy, they're cool, said Jasper. I'm not a little bunny anymore. I'm a big rabbit now. Mom agreed to buy one pair. That night, Jasper wore his cool new underwear to bed. Do you want me to leave the hallway light on, asked Dad. Dad! I'm not a little bunny anymore, said Jasper. I'm a big rabbit now. His dad shut the door, and that's when Jasper noticed the underwear glowed. Look at that green light, a ghoulish, greenish glow. Ooh, his underwear looks angry. He closed his eyes. He pulled up the covers. He buried his face in his pillow, but it didn't help. He could still see that ghoulish, greenish glow. Jasper leaped out of bed and put on a pair of plain white. He stuffed the creepy underwear into the bottom of his laundry hamper. He finally fell asleep. But when he got up the next day, look how happy his underwear <laughs> He was wearing the creepy underwear. Jasper threw them into the garbage can. He was still a big rabbit. He wasn't scared or anything, but he was done with scary underwear. After school, Jasper was doing his homework when he heard it. A scratchy, scraping sound coming from his dresser. He opened the drawer and they were back, staring at him with that ghoulish greenish glow. 
he snatched the creepy underwear out of the drawer. He grabbed a big envelope and some stamps. It says, to China. <laughs> bye bye, scary underwear, he said, dropping the package in the mailbox. When he opened the front door the next morning, there they were. And were those chopsticks? His creepy pair of underwear had somehow returned from China, and it had brought back souvenirs. Huh, that's strange. Jasper grabbed his mom's good sewing scissors. She didn't like him using them, but this was an underwear emergency. This time, the creepy underwear was gone for good. Look how happy Jasper looks. Look at all the pieces of the underwear. At bedtime, he slowly opened his underwear drawer. Nothing, just plain white undies. He searched under his bed. He shook out his lampshades. Whew, there was no sign of creepy underwear. He went into the bathroom to comb his ears, you know, as rabbits do. They were back. What's the matter with you, his mom asked. You're so jittery lately. Nothing, he yelped. A grown rabbit couldn't be terrified of his underpants. He seized the underwear. He snagged a shovel from the garage, and he rode. He didn't stop pedaling until he re reached Creek Hanger Hill up here. But what's funny, you see this? There's carrots in there. That's because they have another book called Creepy Carrots. It's by the same author and illustrator. And there's, there's the creepy carrots. They're in this one, too. If you like this story, you should check out that one. Jasper began to dig. He dug until his hole was dark and deep and 100% underwear proof. He dropped the underwear in. They gleamed from the bottom, that ghoulish, greenish glow. But not for long. See, he filled in the hole. He buried them deep, didn't he? When he got home, Jasper crept up to his dresser. They couldn't be in there. There was no way, right? He reached for the handle. He peeked in. Nothing, just plain white. Jasper smiled and turned out the light. <gasps> what do you see here? It's totally dark. I can't see a thing. <gasps> there was just one problem. It was really dark in there, even for a big rabbit. Look how I, wide his eyes are. <laughs> Jasper turned on the light. He looked at his non-glowy pair of plain white, and he knew what he had to do. Look, he's heading out with a shovel, and he's digging up his underwear. The creepy underwear were a little muddy, but they still filled the room with that gentle greenish glow. <laughs> The next day, Jasper gathered his allowance money and went to the underwear store all by himself, just like a big rabbit. That night, Jasper wasn't scared at all. As he laid down to sleep, he smiled. And so did his underwear because they had finally found somebody who wasn't scared of creepy underwear. Look at all the creepy underwear hanging up. It gives his bedroom a nice light that he can see in the night. The end. And you may notice we have our own creepy pair of underwear over here. And I'll tell you more about that when it's time to talk about the craft. Because our craft today is inspired by this book. So it's a lot of fun. Okay. Should we sing a song? Get up on your feet and join me for this action song, okay? We're going to talk about days of the week and underwear. Monday's undies are so fun. They are so comfy when I run, run. Tuesday's undies are so snug. They feel just like a friendly hug. Give yourself a hug. Wednesday's undies are so grown up. They stretch with me when I jump up. Did you jump? <laughs> Thursday's undie, undies are good clothes. When I stand on tippy toes. Stand on your tippy toes. 
Friday Sundays near my skin, they make me happy when I spin. Woo, get dizzy. <laughs> Saturday's undies fit just right to wear outside and fly a kite. Are you flying a kite? <laughs> Saturday's undies are so fine when I'm sitting down to dine. Sit down to dine. I wear undies every day when I'm at home and when I'm away. I wear undies when I sleep. They're cozy when I'm counting sheep. <laughs> Did you go to sleep too? <laughs> well, let's read our next story. It's also funny. This one is called... Attack of the Underwear Dragon, and it's written by Scott Rothman, and pictures are by Pete Oswald. What do you see there? I see a dragon. What's he wearing? Underwear. Oh, my goodness. Let's see what happens in this one. Cole had always wished he could be an assistant knight to Sir Percival, his favorite knight of King Arthur's round table. So Cole wrote him a letter. Dear Sir Percival, I would make a great assistant knight because I'm smart, I work hard, and whatever I don't know, I promise to learn. Please give me a shot. Love, Cole. Sir Percival read Cole's letter and cried. That's right, knights cry. We are crying. <laughs> Knights cry at sad plays and bad plays, when they step on something sharp or run into a harp, when they cut onions or get bunions, look at his big red toe, Woo. when they get stuck on castle ceilings, or when a wizard hurts their feelings. But Sir Percival cried because he had once written a letter to his favorite knight, Sir Lancelot, who had given him a shot. So Sir Percival made Cole his assistant knight. Isn't that amazing? Cole did it. Cole had a lot to learn. He learned how to sharpen Sir Percival's swords, spears, battle axes, and knight pencils. He learned how to ride a horse. <laughs> Look, he's upside down. <laughs> and swing a sword. He's cutting watermelon. That reminds me of that Fruit Ninja game. That's a fun one how to paint Sir Percival doing awesome night poses, and calm Sir Percival when he awoke from nightmares about a big scary underwear dragon. Cole learned how to get knocked off a horse. Oh, look, he's got knocked off, he's flying through the air, and that it says manure. Phew, I wouldn't want to be knocked into that. Knocked down by a knight, knocked over by a princess. Look how strong she looks and knocked out by a catapult. Oof, that looks tough. At battle time, Cole learned how to pack Sir Percival's stuff, lug it to battle, cheer for Sir Percival when the battle began, and bandage his boo-boos when it was all over. That's a lot of boo-boos. Cole loved learning what Sir Percival, what made Sir per Percival a great knight even if Sir Percival was terrified an underwear dragon would come and destroy the kingdom. What a fear. Unfortunately, an underwear dragon came and destroyed the kingdom. <laughs> oh no, look at that big underwear dragon. The kingdom looks like it's in rough shape. All the knights fought the underwear dragon and all the knights lost. Pretty soon, there was only one knight left. Pretty soon, there were no knights left. What are they gonna do? So Cole wrote another letter. Dear Underwear Dragon, I'm only an assistant knight of the round table, but I think you should clean up the mess you made because it's not nice to mess up a kingdom that does not belong to you. I can help if you want. Love, Cole. The Underwear Dragon got Cole's letter and ate it. That's right. Underwear dragons can't read. <laughs> He's eating it. 
Underwear dragons can't read letters, jesters, sweaters, this is high, billboards, signs for gills, swords, that way, party invitations, poems about crustaceans, that's like a shrimp or a lobster, royal decrees, bath oil recipes, moat signs, goat kinds, menus, words with tenues, or even maps that medieval hens use. <laughs> he can't read any of that. The under dra underwear dragon went to eat coal next. There he goes. What's gonna happen? When Cole saw the underwear dragon, he was scared. And when the underwear dragon attacked, Cole didn't think he would be able to do anything. But then, Cole remembered everything he'd learned from being an assistant knight, and fought, and jousted, and wrestled, and catapulted the underwear dragon. Until its underwear flew off. <laughs> I love this picture, look how embarrassed he looks. <laughs> and so did the dragon. He lost his underwear, so he flew off. The whole kingdom cheered and helped Cole clean up the mess the underwear dragon had made. <laughs> Look at this. They turned his underwear into a big banner and it says, thank you, Cole. <laughs> They're all cheering for Cole. Back at his castle, King Arthur made Cole a knight and gave him a place at the round table. But Sir Cole just wanted to get some rest because tomorrow, he needed to find his own assistant knight of the round table. He became a knight. It came full circle. Did you see that? How funny. He beat that underwear dragon. Okay. So it's time for another song. And this time we're going to take a song that you kind of know, maybe. And we're going to change it a little bit. It's normally head, shoulders, knees, and toes. But this time we're going to say, Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear. <laughs> okay, here we go. Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear, knees, and underwear. Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear, knees, and underwear. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and underwear. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear, knees, and underwear. Let's do it one more time, okay? Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear, knees, and underwear. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear, knees, and underwear. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and underwear. Head, shoulders, knees, and underwear, knees, and underwear. <laughs> Good job, friends. What a silly song. All right, it's time for our last story. This one is called The Underpants Zoo. Pictures and Words by Brian Sindelbach. What do you see here? I see, is that a bear and a monkey and a lizard? And they're all wearing underwear. Oh, back there's an ostrich. They've got underwear too. A zebra wearing underwear, how silly. A tiger and a monkey both wearing underwear. There's a new zoo in town. And here's what I've heard, the underpants zoo is completely absurd. <laughs> Come in and find out why there's been such a fuss. It's a zoo where the animals wear underpants just like us. The underpants zoo. And look at all the different animals and the different kind of underpants. They all kind of match their personality, don't they? It's important for lions to appear royal and grand. Camel says, mine keep getting filled up with sand. <laughs> Look at how much sand. Zebras have stripes, but they like stars the best. Leopard prefers spots, as you may have guessed. Hippos have hearts, because she's such a romantic. Elephant size is extra jumbo, got gigantic. Kangaroos boxers need plenty of bounce. For the sleepy sloths, it's comfort that counts. Look how fuzzy their undies look, very comfy. It says, shh, sleeping sloths. 
The snakes are good friends, so they share the same pair. Make fun of crocodile style if you dare. <laughs> Look at crocodiles. Pink frilly underwear, pink hat. So cute. Octopus can wear four pairs at a time. Dolphins and long johns? It boggles the mind. The penguins chill their underpants in the freezer. Ooh, that's cold, I bet. The monkeys' wild trunks are always cloud crowd pleasers. <laughs> they look like they have like lightning or electricity or something all zigzaggy. It may look as though Anteater is doing some silly dance, but look closely and you'll see his underpants have got ants. <laughs> I'd be doing a silly dance too, wouldn't you? Oh my goodness, look at all the ants crawling up his leg. Woo! And you can see the little bumps where the ants are. I wouldn't like that one bit. The underpants zoo, I'm sorry to say, is closing its gates for the rest of the day. But we'll visit again, we'll drop by very soon. Next time we'll stay for the whole afternoon. The underpants zoo, closed for underpants de-antsing. <laughs> The end. I'm glad they don't have to de ant my underpants. That would be terrible. Okie dokie, hokey pokey. Here we go. So, our craft today is a creepy pair of underwear. I've created some cat craft kits that are available in the preschool library. And it comes with a blank pair of creepy underwear. And inside of it, you'll see, whoopsie, I dropped some things. You'll see a couple of eyes that you can glue on and one eyebrow. See, our guy only has one eyebrow all the way across. Um, a mouth. And in the mouth, we'll put some teeth. And then on the side of his head, we have some little pieces of black paper that we'll make these little bolts out of. So we just glue it all together, and then you can take a black marker or a black crayon or even a pen, whatever you have, and draw hair on the top, and you'll have your very own pair of creepy underwear. Won't that be fun? So check for that at the preschool library. And that brings us to our goodbye song. I'm so glad you joined us today. Let's sing it. We wave and sing goodbye. We wave and sing goodbye with our friends at story time. We wave and sing goodbye. We clap and sing goodbye. We clap and sing goodbye with our friends at story time. We clap and sing goodbye. We wink and sing goodbye. We wink and sing goodbye with our friends at story time. We wink and sing goodbye. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>